This is Money Guide with Mary Stirk from Stirk Financial Services. Now, here's Mary Stirk. Welcome to Money Guide with Mary Stirk. And today we're talking about avoiding recession investing mistakes. Listen, re- recession talk is on everybody's mind. Is it coming? We don't know. We don't know if we're in it for sure. We don't know when it's coming for sure. We don't know exactly how long it will last. Likelihood is we've got a recession coming though. So when you think about the fact that recessions are inevitable, they are part of a normal economic cycle. The thing that we forget though is how scary they are. You know, you've got your news blasting out all this negative information at you. Your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues are probably panicking, talking about their investments, talking about the losses that they've had. Chances are you've already had what we call statement shock when you see how far down balances already possibly are. So when you see portfolios dropping, when you hear recession talk, that tends to make people very nervous. And when people get emotional and they get nervous about investing, they start to make mistakes. So what we're gonna talk about today is some things that you can do that are going to help you understand recessions, help you set your things up, your portfolios up, your investments up in the best way possible for handling a recession and some very specific mistakes to avoid during recession investing. Okay, first of all, let's do a little recession discussion. So the market bottom at the bottom of the last pre-pandemic recession, this was back in 2007 to 2009, was March 9th of 2009. But no one knew that at the time that that was the bottom. For all investors knew, the markets had further to fall. We only know when the bottom happens in hindsight. We only know that specific date that we hit that bottom when we're looking in the rear view mirror. We can't call it, we can't time it. We can only look backwards historically to say this is when it was. So how do we know when this recession is gonna be over? We won't know until the markets have recovered and have been recovered for a while. The good news is that amongst all this uncertainty, amongst all the craziness that's out there, the global supply chain issues, inflation issues, raising interest rates, craziness politically, shenanigans overseas, wars between Russia and Ukraine, all this crazy stuff, there is something that is very important to understand. And that is there are very, very, very big opportunities that can be capitalized on during market dips. So the savvy investors are going to be very well prepared for this and recognize that the reality is, although recessions are difficult, they can be a long-term financial gift when you take advantage of the opportunities within them and you don't panic and make investments mistakes. The trick is to keep your head level, stay alert, and avoid fear-induced expensive investment errors. So hear me say, when you have the right tools, it's possible to seize these opportunities to make money and to avoid the ugly mistakes that can happen with recession investing. So let's talk about one thing that is very important whether we're in a recession or not, but even more important right now, and that is to be risk aligned. So let's talk about what that means. Everybody talks about risk. You've heard me talk about risk tolerance before quite a few times. Well, risk aligned really does mean that you have your money set up in such a way that your investments, in fact, are aligned with when you're going to use them in your life and how much risk you're comfortable with. People's level of comfort with risk tends to change during a recession. We get a lot of calls saying, oh, maybe I should pull out. I just can't handle losing anymore. But if your accounts were risk aligned well before market drops, you really should be able to comfortably ride through recession investing highs and lows. So one of the things you wanna look at is where you are in your life, okay? Are you 
in a point in life where you're going to need that money in the next few years? Are you going to need some of your money in the next few years? Or is it going to be decades before you need your money? Your personal risk level is certainly going to fluctuate, not only depending on your comfort level, but also that time frame until you use it. And the bottom line with money is this, your money should be aligned with the time frame and the purpose in your life that you're going to utilize it. So we look at money in three buckets of time, a now bucket, a soon bucket, and a later bucket. The now bucket is all about money that you're going to utilize in the next 12 months, the next one year. This money might include expenses that you know you have, it might include income that you need to use in the next year, or it might include your emergency fund, whatever you're comfortable with inside your emergency fund, but it's the next 12 months. That money really should not have risk attached to it. You probably should have that kind of money in the bank with an FDIC guarantee attached to it. Now that's the now bucket. The soon bucket, we consider that to be money that you might use in the next 10 years, okay? The next 10 years of your life. So why 10 years? Well, the reason that we go with 10 years is that historically, when we look at market cycles, when we look at recessions and how long it takes to recover for them, most of the time we've recovered from market downs in a recession well within that 10 year period. So that money that's in the soon bucket that we're gonna be utilizing in the next 10 years, that should be more conservative. That shouldn't have major losses against it that come with recession market downturns. Now, this time's a little bit different because most of the time people think about, you know, investments that don't fluctuate as much, but what we have seen as bond market indexes go down this year because of inflation and interest rate increases. It's a little bit of an unusual situation. Does that mean that your soon bucket has blown up? Probably not, but it does mean you may have to think about your spending patterns, at least while it's down. We'll come back and talk about that in just a few minutes. Okay, the next piece of this is then the soon bucket is the money that you wanna spend out of during that 10 year period. If it's more conservative and hasn't sunk as much during a recession, then you're okay to take the money out of there. What you wanna avoid is taking it out of your later bucket, which is more growth oriented investments, we want to avoid taking out of those type of investments when the market is down and you've already lost a lot of money on that. So if you have your money aligned in now, the next 12 months, soon the next 10 years, which is where you spend out of, and later 10 years or more, chances are that that later bucket that's going to have the more fluctuation in it will have plenty of time to recover before you actually have to start spending out of that and move some of it over to your later bucket. So that's what I'm talking about when I say be risk aligned. Okay, the second thing that's important for you to consider during recession investing is to be flexible. You want to be flexible in a couple of areas, your spending and in your selling. So when it comes to spending, we do things like buy cars, buy clothes, go on vacations. And what is the big thing that everybody loves to hear? It's on sale. Okay, we all love a deal. <laughs> we all love getting something that's on sale. However, most investors start pushing the panic button when the stock market goes on sale. And the reality is when the stock market drops, that's what you wanna consider to be the market on sale. We've all heard the old axiom, buy low, sell high. The reality is, the scary and sad reality is, is that this is what buying low feels like. It doesn't feel good. It feels the opposite of what your emotions are telling you. Your emotions are screaming, get out, get out. I don't wanna lose anymore. But what savvy investors know is that you wanna be flexible in your selling pattern, which means not hitting the panic button. You also wanna be flexible in your spending, especially when we have significant inflation. 
which we do have right now. And so we're already at a point where we probably need to look at our spending and not be overspending. Consider whether or not you can wait on a big purchase, maybe for another six months or a year to let global supply chain issues settle down a little bit, hopefully, and to let inflation settle down a little bit. Probably in the long run, you'll get a better deal. All right, third thing, third big thing to think about is to be diversified. This isn't new news. This isn't something that is just Mary Stark saying this to you. Everybody's heard about diversification. Everybody's heard about asset allocation. But having the right blend of assets is probably going to help you sleep better at night when we see big downturns in the market like this. Now, in my personal opinion, I think of investing like a three legged stool. The first leg is your market investments, what we've been talking about so far. I also feel like real estate could be a possible good investment for people, as well as business equity or ownership. For me, that's the three legged stool that if those are well balanced, your stool doesn't kind of tip over. So for wealthier people looking for diversification, those are areas that I like to lead them to. So think about that when you're developing your investment strategy or come talk to us give us a shout we can do a zoom meeting we can do a call you can come into the office we have offices in dakota dunes and in kansas city and we can talk about how to help diversify your assets and to get you into the right buckets okay when we come back from our break we're going to talk about some investing mistakes to avoid to pretty much eliminate the expensive issues that a lot of investors succumb to during recession investing. Congratulations to Mary Stirk and the team at Stirk Financial for earning a spot on two Forbes lists, Forbes Best in State Wealth Advisors and Forbes Top Women in Wealth for five years running. Welcome back to Money Guide with Mary Stirk, where today we're talking about avoiding ugly, expensive recession investing mistakes. We've talked about having your risk aligned. We've talked about being flexible with spending and with your selling plan during a recession. And we've talked about being diversified. So now let's go ahead and go into some of those ugly mistakes that we want to avoid. Mistake numero uno, investing with your heart and not with the old head. Contrary to popular belief, investing like an ostrich during a recession where you stick your head in the sand and maybe don't look at your statements too often, that could be a good strategy. <laughs> Most of the time I'm saying, hey, be on top of your investments, know what's going on, things like that. But during a recession, if you're going to emotionally panic, then maybe not looking at things as frequently is a good strategy for you. Why? Because all of the financial news is going to be gloom and doom. All of the financial news out there in a recession is going to freak you out. It's going to scare you. So what do wealthy people do? What do savvy investors know? They know that riding the market down to the bottom without selling can help prevent their losses from becoming real. What do I mean by real? Well, right now you have what's called a paper loss if you haven't actually sold anything yet. It's on your statement, it's on your paper. If you sell something, you lock in that loss. If you don't sell it, you have the chance of potential recovery, which is what we all wanna see happen, right? So as long as you don't sell, you're not locking in those losses and you're giving yourself opportunity for future growth. All right, if you are uncomfortable with that, if your emotions are telling you, oh no, I have to get out of the market, talk to someone. Understand that this is what buying low feels like. Consider looking for opportunity versus looking at it with fear. And here's one thing that's gonna be very helpful for you to understand. According to Forbes, the average recession lasts about a year and a half. Now, everyone's different. Every time frame is different, but if that would happen to hold true for this one, the reality is maybe we're already close to halfway through this. I don't know. We'll have to see what pans out, but these don't last forever. They feel like forever when we're in them, but 
They do not last forever. So my advice to you is do not invest with your emotions, invest with your head. Set the rules of what makes sense for you with your investing and don't deviate for them because of fear or excitement about the market. One of the things that I've said to many clients before is this, if you think your emotions are telling you to do one thing, the right investment decision is probably the opposite of what your your emotions are telling you to do. So do not invest with your heart or your emotions, invest with your head and keep the rules of investing in mind. Buy low, sell high is how we make money. Okay, mistake number two is going it alone. You know, when recessions arrive, things can get really ugly, really quick. Sometimes it's hard to tell if the recession has arrived. Sometimes it's hard to tell when it's done, but the middle of it feels pretty yucky. So we can't predict anything about these, but we can use history as a guide to give us some information about things to be aware of. So if you don't know what history can show you as a guide, then reach out and talk to someone. With so much noise out there in the news, it's hard to separate the noise from actual real information, which then plays right into those emotions. One of the things that wealthy investors tend to do is they ask for help. Wealthy investors tend to have financial advisors, they have wealth managers, they have tax strategists, CPAs, insurance professionals. They have a team of people who helps them make decisions about their wealth. So if you're looking to find out what are strategies to incorporate that your wealthy comrades, your, your, your friends, the people that you know are doing, ask for help. Ask somebody that knows that. This is what financial advisors are trained for. Okay, and then the third investing mistake that we really want to avoid is selling at the bottom. When you sell at the bottom, when you lock in those losses, when you don't have a plan for getting back in, you are not likely to ever recover. This is the biggest ugly mistake that can happen during a recession, selling at the bottom. Now, how do I know where the bottom is? I don't, you don't, we won't know the bottom until what we see happens when we look in that rear view mirror that I talked about. But selling at the bottom does not give you the chance to rebound. What I hear people say all the time is, well, I'm gonna sell now and then I'm gonna get back in later. I'm gonna get back in when I think it's hit the bottom. Well, number one, you don't know when that is. Number two, Nobody in the history of the world has called that right every time. Computers can't even do it. Human brains can't do it because we are emotional creatures. So selling and thinking that you can get back in to time the market is a huge and very, very ugly, expensive mistake that investors make. So how do you ride it out with confidence? You ride it out by having a plan in place. You write it out by having someone to talk to, to help boost your confidence when your emotions get the better of you. And you write it out with knowing recessions are a part of the normal cycle. And over time, we should see some recovery. Every other time in history, we have seen recovery at the end of a recession. It's guaranteed to happen this time. Nope, can't say that every other time it has at some point in time. And for me, that gives me comfort. I believe in the capital markets. I believe in the power of the United States as an investing giant. I believe that we will have an end to a recession at some point and see recovery. And so I hope this is giving you some confidence to avoid these ugly investment mistakes and feel more confident riding through this market in a way that is right for you. So thanks for listening to Money Guide with Mary Stirk. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of your audio provider and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities or services mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risks, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can ensure a profit nor protect against loss. 
Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should only be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Securities and investment advisory services are offered through Woodbury Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC. Insurance offered through Sterk Financial Services, which is not affiliated with Woodbury Financial Services Incorporated. Neither Woodbury Financial Services Incorporated nor its representatives provide tax or legal advice. You should consult a qualified attorney or tax professional to answer your specific questions. Sterk Financial Services is located at 350 Oak Tree Lane, Suite 150, Dakota Dunes, South Dakota, 57049 and can be reached at 605-217-3555. Forbes Best in State Wealth Advisors list includes 10 recipients per state. The award is based on qualitative and quantitative data, rating thousands of wealth advisors with a minimum of seven years of experience and weighing factors like revenue trends, assets under management, compliance records, industry experience, and best practices. The award is not based on portfolio performance or client reviews. There is no fee in exchange for rankings. Third-party rankings and recognitions are no guarantee of future investment success and do not ensure that a client or prospective client will experience a higher level of performance or results. These ratings should not be construed as an endorsement of the advisor by any client nor are they representative of any one client's evaluation.